A Quiet Place 2. Was it good or was it trash? We'll get into it right after this. A Quiet Place 2 is a 2021 American horror film. It's a sequel to the 2018 film A Quiet Place both of which follow a family that is forced to navigate and survive in a post-apocalyptic world inhabited by blind monsters with an acute sense of hearing. Uh, the sequel is written and directed by John Krasinski. If you don't know who that is, remember The Office. Uh, also, you remember the first Quiet Place? He was the father, the husband, the caring, nurturing man, masculine man that he was. All right, bring in my theme music, please. All right, so listen. This movie, was it trash? Was it trash? Uh, fuck, no, absolutely not. So, this was my first time actually going into the movie theaters since the pandemic. Uh, I know they opened up earlier, but I was just like, I don't know how it's going to be. It's just going to be weird. But I had to go see this movie uh, for two reasons. It was only released, well, three reasons. Uh, reason number one, it was only released in theater, so that's the only way I could see it. Number two, I thought the first one was a classic. I had to see how they followed this up. I wanted to see if it suffered from the sophomore slump. And uh, number three, uh, it was filmed in my city. It was filmed in Western New York. And I also have a co-worker that I work with whose son was in the film as an extra. And I actually saw him. I took a picture and sent it to him. Don't tell a movie theater. Don't tell Regal. But um, other than that, let's get into it. Uh, movie stars uh, Emily Blunt, Melissa Simmons, and Noah Jewell. They reprised their roles from the first film. Uh, Cecilia Murphy, I hope I said that correct. And Djilman Hanzu, or whatever. I don't know how to say this nigga name. But uh, he was in Blood Diamonds, and he, he's a great actor as well. But uh, the two stars of the movie for me were uh, Murphy and Simmons. And um, the, what you got from the first film was this, it was a more uh, family dynamic. It was showing how this is centered around this one family and how they survived this event and how they were getting to point A, point B throughout this, um, I guess you could say, catastrophe. Uh, obviously, we saw in the first one they lost a son. Uh, so that was something they were grieving and coping with. Um, but eventually, we know what happened in the first one, and uh, this one picks up exactly where the first one left off. I mean, exactly from when she got the shotgun in the basement or wherever the shelter, wherever they were, it picks up there, and they uh, they hightail it to a, um, I guess you could say a family friend. So listen, before that scene, there's a flashback to day one. It says day one. And it was crazy because when <laughs> they they I recognized the town they were in when they were filming. I'm like, this, this this is just this is crazy. This is bittersweet right here. This is I know this location, but it shows a family friend at this baseball game that they're at, and it, it's crazy how the, the the small interaction we get we get between that it correlates to later in the movie. Uh, so you get to see exactly the day these aliens hit the planet and how it was, and I thought that was pretty cool. And you get another look at John Krasinski, uh, Krasinski uh, because he's just a, he's just a dope he's just a dope actor. So it's good to see him get some nostalgia from him, uh, as short lived as it was. But um, it was a necessary flashback scene, and it wasn't like a two seconds or just something real fast. It actually was a good 10 minute maybe five ten minute scene so uh and it, it it had its purpose it served its use so we we head back into a recent story so once they're leaving their home which they can no longer stay at they have to go find this family friend because obviously that's the closest thing that's the closest thing they know and um it's upon arriving something happens with uh Noah and it's just a, a trickle down effect of what happens so you get uh you get Simmons and Murphy they're on a separate mission right and 
this deaf girl. I don't know. Is she deaf in real life? I have no idea. But uh, she is. She's 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 bullheaded. But I like it. I like it about her. She she's gun. She's she's really determined. And 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 she don't. Her her deaf is not a handicap for her. So she uses that to her advantage. So her and Murphy are on a separate mission, and then it's just uh, Emily Blunt and uh, Noah on their separate mission, which isn't really a mission. They're just trying to contain, but they have to survive and work with what's around them. So it's interesting because you got to see a group of different, you got to see other survivors in this film. And you're, you're wondering how people have managed besides this family is there anyone is it just this family is there other families out there so you get to see group different groups instead of uh survivors that we didn't even know existed and it's weird because you get people who are um just not wired correctly but are they wrong no they're, they're just surviving how they survive you know what i'm saying like it's like the walking dead where they they encounter other groups of survivors and it it, didn't, it it went against exactly what they did to survive, but in this kind of post-apocalyptic world, who's wrong? You know what I'm saying? So it's just all about perspective. Uh, obviously, morally, you look at things, but when it's a the end of the world type situation, what does morals got to do with it? Uh, so you get a, you run into these th different group of survivors, and they have to kind of navigate through these different obstacles they got which takes them to another location and you find out you get a big reveal like oh this is what's going on so i thought that was very good um listen can we get a round of applause for john krasinski yes yes uh, apparently he he wrote this solely by himself he directed it solely by himself and he did an amazing job and i will say this there will be a part three from the way it ended there's definitely going to be a Quiet Place 3, which I hope to get uh, a little more in depth with who these aliens are and why exactly are they on Earth. And it's, it was great because that was one of the things with the first one. You were kind of like, well, why are they here? Like, are they just here to kill a human race? Like, what is their goal? Are they Once they kill a human race, then what? What are they going to do? Just chill out? Are they eating these humans? Are they just killing them? Uh, and you didn't get that, but you did get some kind, some more vulnerabilities that they that they have. You know, you, you get you learn more, you learn some each movie. I think about them. So we already know that one of the vulnerabilities is the sound wave, uh, and we also learned something else about them, uh, which was an advantage and a reason why this other group of people are withstanding the test of time. Uh, so it was very interesting, man. Listen, this movie was great. Um, and you know me, if it's trash, I'm gonna call it trash. I can't wait to call movies trash. I was expecting to call this trash because I'm like, listen, all movies, especially horror ones, always mostly always uh suffer the sophomore slump. That's just you know, that's just what it is. But this was this was this was a pretty good movie. So, how I rate movies is by a boo. Let's give a boo. Or buy a my trademark, which is a ah <laughs> yeah, like that. So um I'm gonna get this a yeah, I think you should definitely go see a quiet place too. Uh get out, it's Memorial Day weekend, get out to the theaters, enjoy yourself, uh, and definitely put this on your list of things to do. Uh if you've seen it, comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Until next time, peace, love, and prosperity. I ain't a black abstract one.